this one name I love to call look at that. The name of Jesus Demons can't withstand No other name I know I can deliver At the mention of the name Every knee must bow Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching me, this day from, yes, 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 how are you doing, and how is your day week, happy new week, and I pray that this week will be a week of divine surprises for you. In the name of Jesus. It will be a week of divine favor. Favor will locate us. Favor will surround us as, like as a shield. Not just us as surround our families. In the name of Jesus. Today, I'm going to be teaching briefly on the subject of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. You know, just like we have the nine gifts of the Spirit, we also have what we call the symbol of the Holy Spirit. So, let's start with water. The Holy Spirit is symbolized as water, which is life-giving flow, which refreshes us and satisfies the believers. Water speaks of washing, cleansing, and fruitfulness. Read John chapter 7 verse 38 to 39 and Psalm 72 verse 6, Psalm 87 verse 7. Glory be to God. Water, what did I say? Water, the, water is a symbol. The Holy Spirit is symbolized as water, which is life-giving flow which refreshes us, the Holy Spirit refreshes us and satisfies every believer. Water also speaks of washing, cleansing us and fruitfulness. Amen. Then, fire also represents the Holy Spirit. Fire symbolizes the holiness of God, which the Holy Spirit is sent for in judgment to purge and to purify us. The Holy Spirit is the one that lights our altars and also places our altar. As in Matthew, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Um, I'm actually taking a walk in the park, so you're going to be hearing some noises, some people's voices. But, um, so. I'm going to find a spot where it's a bit quiet. Well, I will not be disrupted. Praise God. So, as I was saying, that the Holy Spirit symbolizes the fire, symbolizes the holiness of God, which the Holy Spirit is sent for in judgment to purge and to purify us. The Holy Spirit is the one that lights our altars with his fire and also cleanses our altars. Matthew 3, 11, Acts chapter 2, verse 3, Isaiah 4, verse 4, and Hebrews chapter 13, verse 29. Glory be to God. So I'm just going to be giving you a few of the symbols, what represents symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Now, I'm going to be talking about oil. Oil, oil speaks of consecration. You know, consecration of the Spirit's anointing grace. His illumination of his teaching, his soothing and healing balm of his presence. The work of the Holy Spirit is to anoint the members of the church to their priestly function. 
Glory be to God. So they are priestly function. Um, oil is used in the anointing of the priests, the kings to their offices, the ministers before they are released out into their various offices are anointed with the oil to consecrate them. Glory be to God. I remember in 2006 when I was in Florida Bible School, um, before we were released out, we were anointed with oil. So that oil symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That oil symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, as I was saying, oil speaks of consecration of the Spirit anointing grace. His illumination of his teaching, his soothing, and healing balm of his presence. The work of the Holy Spirit is to anoint the members of the church. To anoint the member of the church to their priestly function. Amen. So, oil is used in the anointing of priests, kings to their offices, the ministers before they are released out, uh, before they are released to their various offices are anointed with oil to consecrate them. Do we remember a few months ago, I think it was in May, when Prince Charles was made king in the UK. At a point in the service, the Archbishop had to use the oil to consecrate him into that office. And that consecration, you know, that oil represents the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now let's talk about the seal. The seal is still a symbol. The Holy Spirit is referred to as the deposit, as a seal and an earnest in the hearts of Christians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Uh, second, uh, Ephesians 1, verse 13 to 14. The Holy Spirit is God's seal on his people. His claim on us as his very own. The seal representing Holy Spirit making a claim over us you know the greek word translated earnest in these passages is arohabon arohabon which means a pledge that is part of the purchase money or property given given in the advance as security for the rest the spirit of the the gift of the spirit to the believer is a down payment on our heavenly inheritance which Christ has promised us and secured for us at the cross. It is because the spirit has sealed us that we are assured of our salvation. No one can break the seal of God over our lives. Glory be to God. No one can break that seal of God over our lives. Amen. Amen. So, the seal, the Holy Spirit is given to believers as a first installment to assure us that our full inheritance as the children of God will be delivered. Amen. Will be delivered. And also, the Holy Spirit is given to us to confirm to us that we belong to God who grants us His Spirit as a gift. Just as the grace and faith are gifts in Ephesians 2, verse 20, verse 8 to 9. Through the spirit of the through the gift of the spirit, God renews and satisfies us. And uh, he, pro he produces in our hearts his feeling, hopes, and desire, which are evidence that we are accepted by God, that we are regarded as his adopted children. Amen. Adopted children, that our hope is genuine and that our redemption and salvation are sure in the same way that a seal guarantees a will 
or an agreement. Glory be to God. God granted to us his Holy Spirit as the certain pledge that we are for his forever and shall be saved in the last day. The proof of the Spirit's presence is its operations on the heart, which produces repentance. The fruit of the Spirit, Galatians, 12, Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. Conformity to God's command and will. A passion for prayer and praise and love for His, love for his people. These things are the evidence that the Holy Spirit has renewed the heart and that the Christian is sealed for the day of redemption. So it is through the Holy Spirit and his teachings and guiding power that we are sealed and confirmed until the day of redemption, complete and free from the corruption of sin and the grave. Because we have the seal of the Spirit in our hearts, we can live joyfully, confident in our sure place in the future that holds unimaginable glories. Glory be to God. So I'm talking about what are the symbols of the Holy Spirit. So now we're going to talk about wind or breath. The breath symbolizes the life giving of God in regeneration power. The Holy Spirit is invisible as a person, yet its effect can be seen in us as in Acts chapter 2 verse 2. John 3, 8, Ezekiel 37, verse 9 to 10. In the valley of the dry bones, the prophet was told to prophesy upon the dry bones so that they may live again. He was told to breathe fresh, afresh on the dry bones. That breath is the Holy Spirit of God. The, when the Holy Spirit of the Most High God breathes upon our lives, there is refreshment, rene uh, renewal, power, and transformation. Amen. And now we go to the symbol, the dove. The dove of the symbol of the dove is used to represent his purity, the holiness, purity, beauty, gentleness, and peace. All the four gospels accounts refers to the baptism of Jesus by John at the river Jordan in Matthew 3, verse 16. Mark 1 verse 10, Luke 3 verse 22, and John chapter 1 verse 32. The Luke account says, And the Holy Spirit came down in a bodily shape, like a dove on him. Because the Holy Spirit is just as spirit, he is not visible to us. This occasion, however, was a real visible appearance and doubtless seen by the people. The dove is an emblem of purity and harmlessness in Matthew 10, 16. And the form of the dove was assumed on this occasion to signify that the spirit with Jesus will be endowed will be one of purity and innocence. Another symbol involving the dove comes from the account of the flood and Noah's act in Genesis chapter 6 verse 8. When the earth has been covered with water for some time, Noah wanted to check to see if there was dry land anywhere. So he sent out a dove which came back with an olive branch in her beak, Genesis 8 verse 11. Since that time, the olive branch has been a symbol of peace. Glory be to God. Symbolically, the story of the dove tells us that God declared peace with mankind after the flood purged the earth of his wickedness. The dove representing his spirit, bringing the good news of reconciliation with peace, with God. Of course, this was only in a temporary sense because true spiritual reconciliation with God only comes through Jesus Christ. But it is significant that the Holy Spirit was pictured as a dove at Jesus' baptism, thereby once again symbolizing peace, which since that time, the olive branch has been a symbol of peace. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at the dew. Dew is another symbol of the Holy Spirit. Dew only comes in the stillness of the night. 
bringing refreshing to the grass. The dew represents the spirit as bringing refreshing, refreshment to the church, to the life of a believer. Psalm 133 from 1 to 2 and Hosea 14 5. Dew is the gift of God. Genesis 27 verse 28. God gave thee of the dew of heaven. The dew falls equally on cabbages and roses and blesses the kings and farmers and gardeners alike. It is not desired but comes as the free gift of God. So the Holy Spirit, He the Holy Spirit, He freely falls upon high and the low, the rich and the poor alike. Like salvation, the Holy Ghost is spoken of as a gift. In Acts 2 38. Dew as the king's favor. In the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs chapter 19, verse 12, the king's favor is as a dew upon the grass. This statement is rich with suggestion. Grass is a symbol of man. We read all flesh is as a grass. Dew being typical of the Holy Spirit. We have a delightful suggestion of the Holy Spirit being poured out on all flesh. This is called the, the king's favor. To this agreed the words of the apostle, therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has showed forth his this which you now see and hear in Acts 2 verse 33. The outpoured Holy Spirit is a characteristic of, of this age, is the blessed favor of our King from his throne in the glory land. Romans 14 verse 17. Dews makes it for growth. In Psalm 133 verse 3, like the dew of Hermon that cometh down from the mountain of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. Glory be to God. The following description, descriptive account of one who travels in this region is very significant. Unlike most other mountains which gradually rise from lofty um, table lands and often at a great distance from the sea, Hermon starts at once to the height of nearly 10,000 feet from a platform scarcely, scarcely above the sea level. The vapor coming in coming in contact with the snowy side of the mountain is rapid, rapidly congealed and so participated in the evening in the form of dew, the most copious we ever experienced. It penetrates everywhere and saturates everywhere. So dew also renews and refreshes. Now, in Job 29 verse 19 to 20, the dew lay all night upon my branch. My glory was fresh in me, and my bow was renewed in my hand. Here we have a description of one who is unique among men. Not only does he experience the renewal of strength and energy as a result of natural sleep, but also the impartation of the supernatural. So mightily did God rest upon Job that his spirit was constantly refreshed and his energy continued unabated in the host of battle. Our spiritual battle is real and we too must have more than natural energy and strength. We must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians 6 verse 10. The number 7. These are all part of the symbol. Number 7. Number seven is used in relation to the Holy Spirit. It represents his fullness, his completedness, and perfection. Number seven. This number seven represents the fullness and perfection of the Holy Spirit's operation in the earth realm. There are three symbolic truths of the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, number one of them is seven lamps in Revelation 1 verse 3 to 4 Revelation 4 5 and Revelation 5 6 this stands for revelation inspiration 
and illumination of the Holy Spirit. Lamps also always have oil to be able to have light. Proverbs 20 verse 27. Seven horns. Revelation 5 6. Horns symbolizes, uh, symbolizes power and defense. The seven horns speak of omnipotence, which means that the Holy Spirit is all powerful. Glory be to God. The seven eyes of the Spirit. Eyes represent sight, insight, perception, intelligence, discernment. This also speaks of Him being omniscience, His fullness and His insight. The Holy Spirit all seen, seen all things and knows all things. Nothing is hidden from Him. It also speaks of His discernment. The Spirit the Spirit is the one that gives us the spirit of discernment, which enables us to be alert when there is danger around us, when things are not right. Revelation 5, 6, Zachariah, Zachariah chapter 3, verse 9, and Zachariah 4, verse 10. Glory be to God. I hope you have learned one or two things from this symbol of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's just a symbol, but the Lord gave us the wee McCoy on the day of Pentecost which is the Holy Spirit. So when we say the oil, the oil just is just a symbol of the of the Holy Spirit. So so also is the wind. Oil speaks of consecration. When we are about to be consecrated into our various offices, the oil, the anointing oil is used to anoint us. And it needs you know when we are anointed, the oil is used in the anointing of the priests, the kings to their offices, the ministers before they are released out into their various offices are anointed with oil to consecrate them. Glory be to God. So, I just wanted to share briefly a few of the symbol of the Holy Spirit to you. You know, you can listen to it carefully. And um, these are part of the things that I taught in, this, in the Bible school. Um, in the school of prophets and also the wind or or breath symbolizes the life life giving of God in regeneration power the Holy Spirit is invisible as a person yet his effect can be seen in us you know even though we don't see the Holy Spirit face to face believe you me my beloved when the Spirit of God enters you oh my god it can come in different forms for me personally when the presence of the lord descends the first thing i start feeling i start feeling cold and then i start it's like as if um icy chilled water is pumped into my vein i start and then i start shivering so that's that's just me i don't know what other method the holy spirit uses for some people and I, you know, when I can't even, sometimes I can't stand on my feet. I just have to lay down or lie down because his presence was so awesome. It's so, you can, it's just as real. The Spirit of God is just as real as you are seeing one another, you know. So I just want to thank God for giving us his precious Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, you know, when I was talking about some of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. I made mention of the oil. I made mention of the um, the seal, the seal, which the Holy Spirit seals us, um, which represents like a pledge. It's a pledge that part of the purchase money or property given in advance of the security of the rest. The gift of the Holy Spirit is a down payment on our heavenly inheritance with Jesus. Christ has promised us and secured us at the cross. It is because the Spirit has sealed us that we are assured of our salvation. No one can break that seal of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Then we have the breath. You know, the life breath means it symbolizes the life giving of God in regeneration power. The Holy Spirit is invisible as a person, yet it's more real to us than any other thing. Because as I said, when the Spirit of God, when, when His presence uh, descends, sometimes you can hardly stand. I mean, personally, when I feel the Spirit of God, I feel this chill, cold chill 
um it's as if iced um cold water is piped into my spirit into my body i start shivering and then part of the symbol also it means the dove the dove the symbol of dove is used to represent his purity his beauty and his gentleness and peace and well, i spoke also of the dew the dew comes in different forms dew only comes in the stillness of the night bringing refreshing to the grass the dew represents the spirit as bringing refreshment to the church to the believer to the life of every believer psalm 133 verse 1 to 3. so it's always good to know some of these um teachings so it can help us one of these days i'm going to teach on the symbol what does figure 12 represent i mean i remember when the spirit of god gave me this revelation about number 12. I was at the pastor's conference in Ijebode, in Ogun State in Nigeria. And, uh, you know, it was uh, the late Bishop Tayo Udunuga um, that, that uh, I, was, I was preaching for at that pastor's conference. And everybody else had um, one topic. But I asked Bishop, I said, Bishop, there are so many speakers. He said, you're a prophet, why don't you come? Just come speak whatever the lord is saying to us the body and i don't know anything much about 12 figure 12 but the holy spirit downloaded these whole 12 figure 12 to me that at the end of the teaching the cd was sold out before i even came down as i was coming down from the pulpit so when god gives you a word is you know it sure will benefit the body and um, you know so i just want to thank god for what god is doing in this hour we are not tired, we are refreshed by the Spirit of God, we are renewed by the Holy Spirit, you know, we are strengthened um, by the breath of God, the dew refreshes us daily, the dew as the king's favor, you know, so in Proverbs 19 verse 12, he said the king's favor is as the dew upon the grass, you know, so the dew also makes for growth, um, the dew refreshes, renews and refreshes. And then I spoke about the figure number seven. And may the Lord bless you. My name is Dr. Margaret. By the grace of God, the general overseer of a ministry called Sanctuary for the Broken Hearted Ministries International. Where God has raised the dead by the grace of God. God has brought counselless healing. People suffering from cancer, lupus, women believing God for the fruit of the womb. The Lord has been gracious you know, in bringing all this and it's not by my mind it's not by my power but by the spirit of god all this that we're talking about is is part of the demonstration as a believer he said in my name you will cast out demon you pick a serpent uh you will speak in a new tongue if you do if you drink deadly poison it will not hurt you so it's part <clears throat> excuse me the polling count today is very high so it's part of the uh, of the the deposit in us that is a this science shall follow thee so as a, as every believer should be able to demonstrate <coughs> excuse me this sign shall follow thee so that means every believer we ought to be able to raise the dead it's not just the pastors it's not just the prophet Every believer ought to speak in tongues. He said when we drink deadly poison, it will not affect us. You know, we should be able to cast out demon in the name of Jesus. So our God is good. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to touch up on the, the, the polling count is so high this morning so i give god the glory god the praise for what he's doing in our lives you know christianity is not a religion it's a lifestyle <laughs> it's not a religion it's a lifestyle and when you are consuming it you are totally sold out you know you don't think of any other thing lord how am i going to please you today lord what shall i do today that's all that is in your mind that is you see 
even though we live in the world, but we are not of this world. Do you understand? So we go about our daily businesses knowing the person who is living on the inside of us. Maybe from the time you gave yourself to Christ as a believer, from the time of your salvation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things. So all things mean, as it mean that you used to drink? What happened? The Spirit of God will convict you. You stop it. Drinking in moderation is not bad, but there are some of us that God consecrates as they don't touch alcohol. Right. So if you used to steal, say steal no more. If you used to fornicate, fornicate no more. If you used to do adultery, no. If you are a murderer, stop. Uh, if you are a liar, stop. Um, so all these things, it's the Spirit of God that convicts us. That's one of His works. He convicts every believer. You know when you want to do something of terrible? You know what stops you? It's the Spirit of God that will be nudging you. Say, no, don't do it. No, don't go there. No, don't talk like this. No, don't don't grudge. Don't, you know, don't put anybody in your heart. Let them go. This is part of this. So the Holy Spirit is here to work, to convict us of our sins. Amen. And to bring us to a place of repentance. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Please help me share this video. God bless you.